deep in the jungle of Guiliana, starts one of the toughest forest training tests. The stretcher operation. There is no trick here. Stay there. Be careful to move. Move. Be careful to pose. Pose. Or how to evacuate an injured man as fast as possible from a hostile terrain. Pierre and Nico tie the fake victim well to a tree trunk. Are the feet good? It is tight. They're hurrying. Time is running. They have less than one and a half hour to complete their mission. They start with the stretcher trail. It will put them in a situation of fatigue. They will be heavily loaded. They have 400 meters to build in a swampy and muddy area. It is some mud that has a little suction cup effect and holds your legs to the bottom. It requires a lot of effort on the thighs. For me, it is the most difficult CEFE track. The timer has started. Go on. Within this group, Corporal Sam was appointed to play the fake injured. We shall see, it's far from being the best role. Be careful to support. We go this shoulder way. Shoulder to shoulder, come on, let's go. Selva, forward. Top start, for a course, good cohesion is essential. Come on, give it. Support, guys. It's too static, it's not good. Each obstacle is pain. You have to move. The famous mud that Captain Samuel was talking about is there to complicate the task of the military. Get down into the mud. He goes ahead. Go down into the mud and move branches. Go. Go on. Go. Come on, guys. We're not hanging out here. To be motivated, soldiers can count on Instructor Luz. 12 years of legion for this native Chilean. He has been in Guiliana for six months. They are well seasoned, they work well behind, and it's a collective effort. They still have the potato. It's moving, it's progressing well. Right now, we're not bad. Without team spirit, the mission is impossible. Push behind. Go on, push. Help me up. In his makeshift stretcher, Corporal Sam is having a hard time like the others. Push. Push me. Despite the difficulty, the men manage to make progress. Team spirit is the only thing that matters. One, two, three. Push. Anyone who does not play as a team is quickly called to order. Come on. I shoulder it. You are pulling me. The equipment is burdened by the mud, but the group is at the moment to keep up the pace. Move forward. For the moment, they are good. Is the technique good to overcome the obstacle? Yes, that's fine. It's going forward. They work well behind. More drive and strength on the legs, and it goes. We're ready. Come on, move on. In the second part, the test gets even harder. More and more water. The course narrows, making maneuver more and more delicate. That's it. That's good. Arrival seems to be a long way off. It's not bad. Especially for Corporal Sam. He's about to break up. Come on, guys. Lift up. Guys, I can't breathe. Bunch of bastards. Sam is at breaking point. Another 20 minutes of effort before reaching the finish point. Let's go. Let's go. Push behind. The men get to destination, but Staff Sergeant Thomas will not stop the timer till Sam is placed at a vertical position. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The test is over. The Legion's battle cry can be heard. Come on. Viva Selva, three times. Viva, Viva Selva. Selva. 
Viva Selva! To the very end, Staff Sergeant Thomas does not let anything go. The rally cry must be executed flawlessly. Viva! Viva. Selva! Viva! Selva! Viva! Selva! Sam's ordeal comes to an end. It was clearly time for him. He cannot be mad at his mates. Their performance was praised by Captain Samuel. They did well. They were in difficult conditions, with a particularly low tide. They managed to stay well organized. They were able to overcome the difficulty of the mud, all the felled trees, within a respectable time. On the scale, they would be 19 out of 20. This ordeal is just a taste of what awaits the soldiers. As the days go by, the difficulties will rise more. And the injuries multiply. Pierre with his hand bandaged must go to the end of his strength to meet the challenges that await him. Like the others, Nicole the Serbian will immerse himself in the jungle and tangle with local wildlife. He must be killed or he will return to his territory. Soldiers learn to live with the dangers of the forest, with the dangers of the river too. Mind you, over there. Here there are pebbles. They will experience the thrill of jumping in a helicopter. Dropped more than five meters above the waters of a Fruwai. Finally, Staff Surgeon Thomas will remain until the end of the adventure. Do not start lifting your head, do not move. True to himself, intractable. In French Guiana, there are still two weeks left and so many trials awaiting the 31 survivors of the Foreign Legion training. Since they arrived training, the soldier's universe is this immensity. A jungle as far as the eye can see. The Amazon that interns need to learn to master. That's the aim of today's exercise. Genist is in charge. He's a former soldier. He is now a professional lumberjack. It's cut too high. Pick it up again. Take it off. It's you who cuts. Take it off. After his long military career, he knows from a strategic point of view, knowing how to clear a space in the middle of the forest is of paramount importance. For medical evacuation, we must cut the forest. To make a base camp, you have to cut down the forest for safety because you can't stay under the trees with a minimum risk of accident. There are lots of windfall. The cause of death in Guyana is the fall of trees and branches. You need to know this tool. It is an essential tool for clearing rivers. For example, in a canoe, the waterways are unnavigable, obstructed with wood. You have to clear the river, what we're going to do in an application after this training. The chainsaw is the essential tool to life in the forest. To introduce soldiers to the operation of the chainsaw, Genest is the man for the job. He has lived in Guyana for 30 years now. We train them to use a chainsaw safely so that they can cut trees and not endanger their lives with these particular techniques. If they had acquired experience in the metropolis, they are not same at the tropical level. We are forced to give them specific training. They're ab initio, who sometimes haven't seen a chainsaw in their lives just at the start of the week. The challenge is to try in a week to make them understand what chopping is and that they can practice it safely. We're going to look over there. We won't cut that. That is done. We will do cuts on the ground. In the Amazon, apprentice lumberjacks will quickly discover it. Working with wood is not without risk. You are never safe from a bad encounter. It's the scorpion titus. One of the most dangerous in Guyana, depending on its size and the poisoning it causes you. 
potentially lethal on children or people in weakness. Very common on trees. That's why you shouldn't put your hands on trees without gloves. How do you treat poisoning with that, guys? How do you treat? In the middle of the jungle to heal, nothing beats the D system. It's for the bite. No negative. That's good for disinfection. But the problem is the toxicity of the venom. The advantage with that, like a wasp or a hornet, the injection is not very deep. For smokers, for once it shall be helpful, you quickly put a cigarette closer to the area of the sting. The venom is thermolabile, so the toxin is destroyed in heat. You heat up until you have a good sensation of heat without burning yourself. The effects of the venom will be greatly lessened through the heat at the area of the sting. That goes for scorpion, centipede, wasp. You are stung by this, a lighter, a heat source. You apply for a while, just what's bearable. You will see the effect of edema, and the effect of pain will disappear compared to if you don't treat it that way. Thermolabil is the term. It's the first time I am seeing a real scorpion. I see them in movies. It's small but deadly. Yeah, in a bottle it's not scary, but I can't see myself holding it without the bottle. After the forest, the soldiers will learn to tame the river. In the Guyanese Amazon, the adventure is all terrain. In a few minutes, the soldiers are going to board a canoe for a perilous destination. Will they succeed in putting into practice the lessons taught the week before by Fabrice, the Guyanese instructor? Captain Samuel warns them for their safety and for respect for the equipment. There you lead for Sot Athanas two hours from here by canoe. You've already broken at least five propellers during your training. There you will be in rocks, so apply the engine lift carefully. Don't come back with four more broken engines. You have two backup engines just in case. The aim is not to recover at the end of the training our regiment engines under repair. Apply yourself and lift that motor to avoid breaking additional propellers. See you again in two days, and the instructors will tell me how it went. Attention. Available for the instructor. For 48 hours, they will get into the jungle in contact with the hostile nature and animals. The soldiers are divided into three groups. It is Fabrice who will lead the maneuver. Heading into the unknown. After about 20 minutes of navigation, the river no longer looks like what they have known until then. Rapids, rocks, the river is threatening. There are lots of pebbles. Over there, over there. Even for experienced instructors, this path is very difficult. One of the canoes hit rocks. You have to get out as fast as possible so as not to damage the boats already tested by the trainees during the instruction. Towed by the previous canoe that passed safely, instructor Lewis fights the elements almost alone. Here pebbles, push to the right, push there, over there. After much effort, the obstacle is finally over without breakages. Men are scared to death. Instructor Lewis can breathe. Okay, we had a great one. It was very complicated, but we managed to get through. The current is strong. You have to know how to get on the road with all this current. 
There we did not see the pebbles that were underwater. We stalled. We stalled. We had to back off to pass. It's difficult. The boatman is behind and I am at the front. Sometimes it's hard to communicate and that's not good. It's a good start. Let's go on for the adventures. The adventures are not over yet. The adventure indeed is far from over. The soldiers reach their destination. They land in the middle of the jungle. Despite his injuries, Emilio the Chilean legionnaire is always there for his greatest pleasure. I am happy. We're going to catch the tappers. Then we're going to eat together. From there for Emilio, like Corporal Pierre, it's a leap into the unknown. Nice. It's already wet. We'll see how it goes. Once the equipment is offloaded, the military will live separately in the jungle. Their first mission, to transform part of this dense forest into an impeccable camp. All in an extremely short time. Come on, let's go. You have to do something proper, or... Ouch, ouch, ouch. We have an hour and a half to do our camp. Now we're cleaning up the area. The small branches are cleaned. So that they can be moved easily. It's mostly at night, so as not to get hung up or fall with fatigue. Also to see animals that hang around. In order not to get hurt, do not be bitten. By a scorpion or snake. Then, we will set up the camp, and we'll see what awaits us tonight. The soldiers learned Jeunesse's lessons, the former soldier who became a lumberjack. They know that they have to be careful. The place is infested with dangerous animal species hidden under leaves. But now there's no chainsaw. To take shelter, they are active with a mache. It is an indispensable tool in the forest to manage the soil, cut wood for the fire, cut game as well, everything that is bone. It's really important. Honestly, I wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have that. It's going to fall on your head now. Careful, guys. Soldiers are working hard to clear a space for themselves. You cut that. There is just one spot here. Everyone gets organized. When the land is cleared, you need to find two solid trees that will support their hammock. Each group chooses its place to settle in. Then we test our hammock. If I break my face, it's not good. For testing, we get on it with all our weight. We sway. If it holds up, it means it's ready. In less than an hour and a half, the camp took shape. Little alert in the camp, a man is on the ground. The effort and the tropical heat got the best of Legionnaire Evgen. The Ukrainian is totally stunned. The regiment nurse was called to the rescue. I see everything dark. Because of fatigue, I feel dizzy. It's because of the heat. I feel good right now. That's why I told you to get up slowly. If I get up, it will start again. Come, let's go and sit somewhere else, not in the middle. Helped by the nurse and a compatriot, Edgen is led to his hammock. Nothing serious. Half an hour of rest, and he will come to his senses.
Meanwhile, Nikolay and a group of volunteers have a specific mission. Clear a portion of forest for future country cooking. There in the holes goes back in stride. There are red ants, look. Beautiful red ants. We can't move the trees because they're too rotten, but it has lots of crap stuff in it. Red ants, scorpions, tarantulas. It's dangerous. To the legion, a radical solution. Put fire to get rid of insects. That's called looking for crap. You should never play with bugs. They're inside, the red ants. There is the scorpion. Legionnaire Nicolet learned the lessons. He is beginning to know how to recognize scorpion species. That one's not too dangerous. It paralyzes you for a day or two, in your hand or in your leg. It depends. Because it has big tweezers, he uses his tweezers to catch his victims. It must be killed or it will return to his territory. Sorry, I have to kill you. I don't like that. You have to kill the scorpion, otherwise someone will get stung by one. It's an Evacin. It's dangerous anyway. Evacin or medical evacuation, a word that scares all soldiers in the forest. It marks the end of the training. Corporal Pierre feels an unbearable pain in his hand. Maybe he was stung by a poisonous bug, but he saw nothing. You tell me if you feel it. There. Can you feel it? The paramedic will pierce the abscess with a needle. Corporal Pierre wants to continue, no matter what. I have never seen this case. It is not known if it is a sting or an edema following a sting of insects, trees, or plants. We don't know what it is. He doesn't want to stop, the goal is for him to be able to continue in the best conditions. For Pierre, like the others, giving up is not an option. Nothing can stop this force of nature. The next day, he is okay. He can be found bandaged while doing push-ups on one arm. 71, 72, 73. This is just a warm-up before a strong test supervised by Staff Surgeon Thomas himself. Silence. Catch up on track Leanne. On the program, the demanding Leanne track. Incredible challenge for Pierre, with his injured hand, tackles the course. Single and double zip lines, these different obstacles are to be performed with arm strength only. If he doesn't respect the times or if he puts his feet on the ground, he will be eliminated. Despite his injury, Pierre clings on, a strong morale that gives him wings. Go on forward. Sin, 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 no pressure. Don't rest. A superhuman effort. Don't touch the ground. Pierre finishes on time. Exhausted, he accomplishes a real feat. Trainee has just completed zero failure at your command instructor. A performance that does not leave the staff surgeon insensitive. It makes me happy. It means that the instruction was well done. The mood in the troop is good. The instructor is proud of his men, like Emilio. You only have two obstacles left. Go on, go on, spread your legs. The Chilean wants to pass no matter what the test costs. It's his second attempt. The first time, he arrived late. 
With the strength of his arms, the second will be the right one. He too will take this new step. Praised in turn by the Surgeon Major. Trainee 28. Liane track finished. Zero failure at your command instructor. Congratulations, you have greatly improved your timer. End of the track, Liane. Instructors do the counting. Nobody failed. 31 soldiers are still on course to get the precious certificate. At the end of the test, Sam still remembers the feat of his friend Pierre. This is it. Hans less worse than Pierre, he must have really felt hurt. When I see myself with little common cuts, it stings. Then, we are still here. As they say, the final stretch. It can be long. It can be a lot of kilometers, the final stretch. But that's okay. At the forest training, the new event takes place at night. In total darkness, soldiers will have to hunt for food. A big first for them. Where's my group? Third group. Do you have the brightest lamp? It's me. Okay, you're going to stay ahead. Let's go see if we can find any fish. For the initiated, Fabrice, the Guyanese instructor, who knows the Amazon like the back of his hand. It's fauna, it's flora, and of course the dangers when shooting at night. Gentlemen, we have a good look first. There's no need to shoot an intern who is in a kayak. Over there, on the edge, I think there's something. I think there is a part. Get your gun ready. A rodent, a mammal, that is common here. Only Fabrice, the expert, saw it. The legionnaire surely reacted too late. You're not going to wait until you see a cow to light it up. We're not here to choose. We're here to find food. The next thing you see, even a rat, you throw a punch of 12. What are the ingredients to be a good hunter? We must not let it go. Quite simply, you have to persevere all the time, and that pays off. Just search, that's all. Do not die. Simple. So far, apprentice hunters have had meager loot. A few shells and a few shrimps, nothing to eat. So in order not to remain empty-handed, Fabrice went into the dark. Half an hour later, Fabrice returns with a handful. A caiman. A caiman. For soldiers, meat will soon be on the menu. He was eating a toad. The catch is improving. A legionnaire succeeded in harpooning a big fish. He had to do it several times. Did you slaughter it? Because I lost it twice. There are still some. Can I go? I can still bring some back. Go on. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes. Put it in the pan. Guided by Fabrice, the interns were able to take advantage of the forest and the river. The Amazon is rich, for those who know how to exploit it. With advice from Fabrice, apprentice hunters are starting to gain confidence in themselves. To shoot, you press on it. Okay. You can shoot, 
line shouldn't move too much. At night in Guyana, a legionnaire spotted a new target. Once more, a Cayman. The soldier hit the nail on the head, a big first for him. What did you just do? We shot a Cayman in the head. Is it your first time? Yes, it's the first time. Yes, its eyes still smoke. How does it feel to hunt at night in the Amazon? It's impressive. It's really interesting. With varying degrees of success and after three hours of hunting, each group returns to the camp with their loot. Now all this meat and fish has to be prepared. Here too, very specific rules must be respected. You have to clean it up, get all its guts out, all the things you don't need. It must be cleaned well. After washing it, you put it on the fire and that's it. The cooking will last for the rest of the night. Tomorrow, especially with this pack, soldiers will have enough to fill their stomachs. It's good enough for tomorrow, we'll have enough to eat. If we fish tomorrow, we won't be bad, to change a bit. The next morning, the meat is still smoking. The soldiers meet around the barbecue. They discover jungle cuisine and finally did quite well. It doesn't have to be burnt like that. We are in the forest, we are not in Paris. Here, this is the result. After two weeks of internship and so much deprivation, the food is suddenly plentiful. To top it all, for the first time, soldiers are wondering how to manage stocks. At noon, we can eat all our rations, everything we have. No, you don't have to be stupid. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. It's better to eat that. Keep the rations you guys have. We don't know what's up to today, or what's tomorrow made of. It will be the last coffee. You have to manage food intelligently. I still have four courses of rations left. We hunted well yesterday, but today or tomorrow may not be the same. It's luck. It's beginner's luck. Such a rare moment that the group wants to immortalize it. Perfect. This one is burnt. To the sharing of all these good things to eat, it is Pierre who officiates. Who wants what? Cayman. Cayman? Anyone else? Guys, wake up. We're resuming at 1 o'clock p.m. Here you go. Cayman? Just that? Who wants Cayman? It tastes incredible. We are rediscovering food. It's something other than rations. It is also a ritual of assembly. As you can see, we're all together around food. We are happy to have hunted and to have had game. Everyone gets together. And we're happy to eat something other than rations. Do you want the head? Does anyone want the head? In 10 minutes, nothing left on the grill. The soldiers swallowed it all up. We are foodie. We have some rat. Excellent rodent.
It's better than wild game in France. After 48 hours spent on their own, the trainees leave the jungle and will return to the base camp. Back at the training center, the satisfied but exhausted soldiers will finish with the instruction part. The new challenge, jumping into the river. It is the Air Force, based in KN, that will supervise what is called in military language, drops. The aircraft of Puma is approaching the Legion camp. Once on the ground, the mission gets complicated. For the crew, it was impossible to take soldiers on board as planned. The problem is that you won't hear it any more later. Wait, I'm going to go up and spin my hand. A little technical fault, surely the starter on the left engine. How did you find that out? The noise. You can hear the starter that is a little locked. Go on. Stop, stop. This is gambling. Very quickly, the crew comes to terms. There's no need to take any risk. We have to wait for a rescue team. We're going to wait for a second helicopter which will arrive with a breakdown recovery team. Eventually, we will return with this helicopter, if possible. Otherwise, we'll sleep here. No choice, the crew will have to wait. Finally, they won't spend the night here. A second aircraft is expected in the next hour. Soldiers can prepare to board. Sam takes charge. All behind and then there you go. Stop the controversy now. A regular soldier, Sam is still struggling to adapt to Legion methods. Not because it was done, it was disgusting. That was a column of eight, a column of six, a column of five, a column of seven behind. That's how it was. Now everyone per stick it leaves. It's square and forward. The second Air Force Puma arrives as planned. Today's test can now begin. On a rotation basis of six per group, the men board and get ready to be dropped at mid-flight without a parachute. In the cabin, for some, it is a baptism of fire. But for many, an exercise already done during various operations. The test is supervised by Staff Sergeant Thomas. He gives the green light to jump with a pat on the back for each training. Five meters from the river, the trainees first throw their bags before jumping into the water. The exercise ends with little or no breakage. The helicopter drop. It was great. As a result, I lost a tooth. Little souvenir of this CEFB training. Carabiner attached to the fama strap. I jumped into the water and ding. I felt my tooth floating in the water. I didn't try to catch it. It was useless. Gift from the far. However, it was great. It would have been better if it were higher. It was low. I think for everyone, they would have liked it higher. That's part of the pleasures, a helicopter drop. Is it like a reward for them? Sounds like a Disneyland attraction. Deserved. Deserved. You are not convinced.
In two days, the 31 soldiers still standing will be released into the wild for the decisive part of the internship. Survival, or how to live in total autonomy in the jungle. At my command, rest. It's an opportunity to check if soldiers are proficient in everything they've learned since the start of the internship three weeks ago. Captain Samuel puts pressure. For the individual rally, there is a whole course with 11 workshops in total. Either you have 15 points or you have zero. Either you know how to do or not. It's all timed. All the techniques you are going to do you have an allotted time. When it stops, the MF or instructor checks. A single mistake, a badly made knot, is zero right away. Okay, let's go, backpack. Line up. Behind me. It is decisive for them. This morning, I am unable to tell who will be certified at the end of the internship. It is this small individual rally that will make the difference. There is no double standard. It's either they're in control and they have all the points, or they make mistakes and they immediately get zero for the test. I expect a lot from this rally. Just before the test, last review before the rope knot test. As for the method, among the trainees, there are several schools. And then you're shooting. Same on the other side. We practice till one in the morning. What makes me laugh is that the guys went to bed and now they're tying knots in their brains to be redone this morning to review. I don't think now is the time to study. I keep calm. It's better to stay like this. Think for five seconds. Okay, that's good. I remain logical. Because you're going to see they're so stressed, they're going to do crap. Let me sit. I am resting. A soldier does not sleep. He never sleeps. So he rests, as we do too. Since we are soldiers, we need to rest. The hat on if bugs fall on your head. Waiting position. From now on, questions? No questions. Great. All the rally tests will follow one after another at full speed. Okay. That's good. Learn how to set up bombs. Disassemble and reassemble your weapon as fast as possible. Nothing escapes the expert eye of instructors, like the exercise of fire to be controlled under all circumstances. Never get lost in the jungle. Not always easy for Emilio, who no longer knows which advice to follow. With pressure, stress is inevitable. You always need to confirm. Should you never follow others? Yes, absolutely. We made the mistake of following you. I spoke with him. We thought it was on the left. With fatigue, you let yourself be convinced. It's not a problem. We finally reacted, and that's it. We're here. Thank you. We will continue to the end. Forward. Always forward until the end of the day. All exercises are now over. No one has been eliminated. From now on, interns are supposed to be set for the big adventure. The D-Day. The training is at its last week. The dreaded survival test will begin soon. In the water. Let's go. As soon as the sun rises, the real work begins. 
A forced bath, a pressure that shows the color. The soldiers are going to have a hard time. With wet uniforms, everything becomes much more difficult. And that is the goal sought by the instructors. You hook on the strap. For the first time since the start of the internship, soldiers are ordered to leave all their equipment behind. They have no idea of what to expect. We don't have time to do the excavation. The tide will soon drop. You must also be able to get out of the creek. Now we have to go. Especially since you have to stop with an instructor. They know that they are going to be put into survival very soon. The way it's going to be done, they don't expect it. I think it's going to be a surprise. The aim is to surprise them. Let them not be aware and surprised by the method that we're going to apply. Just weapons. For the upcoming Operation Survival, soldiers are only allowed to arm themselves, their famas, and a machete. Start moving. They are not to have anything with them except for a lighter. No cheating. At the end of the training, Staff Sergeant Thomas is as vigilant as ever. Stop. Hey! What is this? What is it? They were hooks. They were hooks. Traps to catch fish. They are forbidden. The first phase, they are going to do it naked with a knife and cock in your hand, as they say. 17 in Stuttgart. The rest in the turg over there. 45 seconds to board from the back to the front, facing the bottom of the canoe. Your S in the air, head touching the bottom of the canoe, forward 45 seconds. Soldiers have never been under such pressure, and that's just the beginning. 25 seconds. They did not meet the deadlines to board. They need to do it again. Why are they doing it again? Too slow. Too slow. Spread out all over the canoe. Close up and face down. 45 seconds. Go. Go, 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 go. This time will be the right one. Military personnel have an interest in applying instructions. Don't start lifting your head. Don't move. Stay firmly on the ground. It is the great departure into the unknown. Canoes go into the depths of the Amazon. Once at their destination, they discover their new territory.
complete. You get it. We're going to attack the survival phase. You are with your famas, your machites, a lighter. Those who don't have one will take it from their mates. Starting tomorrow morning, you are on your own. Those who catch fruit, birds, or peaches, you don't have fishing kits, so you shouldn't eat much if you get something. You are free to share or to make your own fish on your own little fire and eat it alone. Do as you please. Any questions? Well, if there are no questions, the day intern is here for you and see you tomorrow. Forward. The next few days will be the most intense of the course, the most challenging. The tests in the middle of the jungle will follow one another to end in a blaze of glory with the Jaguar track. A real hell. The worst is yet to come.